Hey everybody, this video is going to show you how to do a hypothesis test for a mean using Excel. And I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One is if you're given a set of sample data, like this example here, and the other one if you're just given the statistics like the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so for this one I've got a list of student GPAs and the claim that the average GPA for all students is greater than 3.3 and I have a level of significance of 0.05. So let's start with those hypothesis statements. So we're definitely talking about a mean. I see that word average in there. So I'm going to come up here. Actually, let me uh, shift my window here. I'm going to go into insert. And I need a symbol because I want that mu. And I've got it in my list here because I use it so often. But if you're having trouble finding it, we can flip through and see. So there's a lot of symbols here you see. I use a lot of these here, and oh, there it is. So under Greek and Coptic, here we go. I'm going to insert, okay, and then I'm going to make this first one equals. Now I use that 3.3 from the claim. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Only now I want this to be greater than 3.3. And so there is the claim. I'll have to make a note to myself for when it's time to do that decision rule. Okay, because from that alternative hypothesis, I can see that this is a right tailed test. And because this is a mean, and I'm not given a population standard deviation, I'm going to use the t distribution. So this is a a t test and I'm using a t distribution for it. Make that a little bigger. Just double click up here and I'll widen that out. Okay, so I am ready to do this. And the great thing about when you have the data is it goes very quickly. All right, so what I'm going to do is go over to the data tab here in Excel and I need to use this data analysis. Now, chances are you don't have this in your tools. This is an add in, um, which I will link to a video. Uh, to show you how to add this, but take a couple of seconds and then you'll have it. And so I'm going to select that and scroll through this list. They have a lot of things that we'll be using later on in the class. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom where I start seeing these tests. So I see a t-test. Oh, that's two samples. This is a one sample. All these are two sample. Um, and so I'm going to choose the last one. Oh, sorry. Second to the last one here. Because I want a t-test, two sample, we're going to assume unequal variances. Don't worry about what that means at the moment. Okay, so select that one. And now I need to select my range of data. So let's select here and pick this here. Now it is asking me for a second set of data, so I'm going to create a, a dummy variable over here. And oh. Hold on. Hey everybody, this video is going to show you how to do a hypothesis test for a mean in Excel. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. The first one when I'm given a set of data here. And this is really the, the quicker one of the two, but oftentimes we're only given like say a mean and a standard deviation and we're not actually given the set of data. So we'll look at both examples. So I also have the level of significance, 0.05, and I've claimed here the average GPA for all students is greater than 3.3. So let's start by writing out our hypothesis statements. And I'm dealing with an average here, so that's mean. And so I need that mu. And if you're wondering, how do I get that? Well, if you go to insert and then symbol, they've got all kinds of nifty symbols in here. If you go to Greek and Coptic here, you'll see a little mu right there and so I can insert that close and so for the null I'm going to say is equal to 3.3 and then I'll do it again for the alternative and we want a greater than here because of our claim so greater than 
3.3. And so that second one was our claim, so I'll make a note to myself so I don't have to look it up again later. All right, so the test type, well, if I look at that alternative hypothesis, um, that is a greater than symbol. So this is a right-tailed test. And because I'm dealing with the mean and I don't have a population standard deviation, this is going to be a t-distribution that I use. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is come up here to data because I'm ready to do my test just about. And I'm gonna look for data analysis. Chances are you don't have this in Excel at the moment. This is an add-in. Um, and I do have a, a video that I will uh, link in this uh, module to um, show you how to add that in. It takes a couple of minutes and then you're ready to go. So if I pull this up, I can see there's a whole bunch of things that I can do uh, using this add-in. The one I want, if you notice, I've got a few t-tests here. All of them are two sample. And well, I just have the one sample. So I'm actually gonna cancel this for a moment. I need to make up a second sample. We're gonna call this our dummy variables. I'll put a couple of zeros in there. I just need something there in order to run this test. So now I come back over here. I'm gonna choose the second to the last one here, this t-test for two samples. And click OK. Okay, my first range of data is going to be my GPAs. And then for the second, I'll choose my made up data here. Notice they don't have to be the same length. Um, I do have labels on those, so I want to click labels. Alpha is 0.05, so I'm going to leave that in there. And the hypothesized mean is 3.3, so that's coming from the hypothesis statement. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick a place that I want this to come out. I'm gonna have it come out right here. And then, okay. And there it is. Let me pull this down a little bit. You can see all the information they calculated. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this dummy information. Don't need that. Widen this column here so I can see what I've got. And I'm going to rename this because I didn't actually do this test. I cheated and I did a one sample um, for the mean. So I can see sample mean variance, lots of things it calculated for me. What I'm most interested in here is where you see these probabilities listed. So that right there, probability that T is less than or equal to T, that is my left tail. So if this had been a left tail test, that's my P value. And if I scroll down, here's the two tail. So that would have been my two tailed test if this had been a not or not equal to in the alternative hypothesis. So we're looking to say, well, okay, I had a right, I had a right tail. So uh, my p value you know, is going to be one minus the left tail. Okay, this is everything to the left of this t value, and I need everything to the right for a right tail. So for the right tail. I'll go equals one minus and then use this value here. And there is the p-value for a right-tailed test. And I am comparing that to 0.05. And so that's definitely bigger than alpha. And if it's greater than alpha, then that means I fail to reject uh, the null hypothesis. Okay, well, if I'm rejecting the, if I'm failing to reject the null hypothesis, then that means there's not enough evidence to support the claim. Because the claim was the alternative hypothesis. So the average GPA all students just can't support that claim uh, based on this information and that's it